What is going on, friends? Sean Don coming back with yet again another technical analysis. Here we have Paul Souza slinging the hammer with a nice side view video, rarely seen. So you guys are going to get a little bit different input today. So before we get into it, I want to let you guys know that if you're interested in technical analysis, if you're interested in throws programming, lifting programming, online coaching of any variety, hit me up. Go to www.gripandrip.co. We can work together and find what you need, what might work best for your situation. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you optimize your training situation. So, all right, go check it out. Gripandrip.co. It's also linked down below in the description. So, let's get into the video. Side view. Like I said, barely seen. Not many people filming from the side. Interesting to see what I can find in this video. I like the side view for seeing posture, seeing direction, seeing how the hips are working. And this is even interesting because it's a like reverse side view. I'm used to seeing side view from 270. Or sorry, from 90, not from 270. So uh, one more time through, and then we'll break it down. Okay, so, boom. Let's, uh, let's break it down. So, oh, we got super high frame rate video. This is going to take a while. Uh, but either way, in the winds, all right, you're facing back of the circle, starting at zero, opening up the shoulders pretty well. You see you're coming over to the right side. The hammer's in the left, back behind you. Shifting back over to the left. Letting the hands kind of drop and relax naturally. Not quite a step up, but you are kind of adjusting that right foot a little bit. Shifting back to the right. Ball goes around the left. Turning the shoulders back to face 270, really nice. Right elbow is down. Left shoulder's up. We'll see what happens with this. All right, as we go through, like I said, this higher frame rate video takes harder to scrub through, so. Takes Sorry, excuse me, it takes more time to scrub through. Um, so, as we're coming through zero, looks like shoulders are level. I would think about, and I can't quite tell from this angle, but I would say, think about turning this left shoulder down, spiraling the left shoulder down, spiraling the hands through zero. As you can see, I've mentioned this in previous videos, your hands right here at this point, kind of pointed uh, back towards uh, where your thumbs are pointing, are kind of up towards, like let's say, like uh, two o'clock. You know, a clockwise kind of rotation through the hands as you come through zero, turn that clockwise rotation into a counterclockwise rotation. So point them towards 11 o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock even. Turn the shoulders over. Look at like a, think about a Sergey Lifinov senior. All right, turn that left shoulder down, turn those hands to the left. Kibway Johnson is an extreme example of this. Um, but with that, it does look like you're very patient as the hammer goes through zero, but there's not really much work coming from the right leg. You're just kind of sitting there and turning at the mercy of the hammer which isn't like the worst thing to do you could be like pulling ahead drastically but i think getting this right leg a little bit more involved and feeling a little bit more pressure coming laterally so pushing you towards 90 degrees as the ball is coming through zero will help stabilize the left side a little bit along with that kind of spiral of the shoulders and the hands because you see this left side turning but the right foot really doesn't turn much at all as the hammer goes through zero not till after kind of remind me of koji we're going push you a little bit. Um, along with that, that left side kind of coming down might help out because as you see, shoulders are kind of level here. It's not bad. The left side is about lower than the left. But trying to get a little bit more direction coming from this left leg. All right, so as the hammer goes through zero, think about pushing backwards and rotating backwards through this left foot, through the inside of this left foot. Push that left hip back to 180. Because as you can see, you're just kind of turning in place here. You want to see this left hip a little bit more out. You want to set the direction a little bit with this left hip. Let's try to see this left hip. You know, like I said, push through the inside of the left foot. Push this left hip a little bit back. That'll give you better direction. But of course, you need to wait for the hammer. Because as you can see, you kind of, as you turn, you kind of come backwards a little bit before you go forwards. There. And you land with your feet just about even, which is totally fine. Shoulders level, hips level, pretty much with the ball. I still think the left shoulder could be down a little bit more. And like I said, hands could be turned a little bit to the left. Like I said, spiral to the left a little bit. Uh, feet are very nice and tight. You see this nice, see this is, what, this is what's cool about the side view. You can see the pendulum backwards. You can see yourself lean backwards. Get this horizontal translation. It's called through the circle a little bit. Um, 
and uh, you get to see the delicate dance that is the hammer throw. Leaning backwards just enough, but not so much that it overtakes you or you overtake it. But, yeah, same thing here. Left side's doing most of the work. Right side could be a little bit more involved. Like I said, your right side, your right leg especially looks like it's just kind of like turning at the will of the hammer rather than kind of working with it. Um, as you can see, it doesn't really turn until after the hammer gets out in front of you. And then the right foot starts turning. But you are, and then see, so this is what I'm talking about. Left hip is just slightly down versus, and maybe it's the line of your t-shirt that's giving me this bias, but left shoulder is up a little bit compared to the left hip and right hip. So this little plane right here, while well, this plane here is a little bit flatter. Um, and you see the left shoulder is up as the hammer goes into or towards the sector, creating a little bit of disconnection. Your hips are turning with it pretty well though. Let's see. And then boom, next turn. Pretty good single support. Left shoulder down a little bit more. I'd rather see I want to think I'd rather see you keep this left shoulder down. Even more. Just a little bit more. Like I said, I think just turning the hands might change up the tension of where you feel it in the body and might automatically set the left shoulder down a little bit more. And then from there, it's about getting the hips up into the throw. Alright, after the first catch. Patience is most important, but I think second most important after that is getting the hips up into it. Whereas you can see, you got, you can see this, you're not getting pulled forward by the hammer, but if you could see these shoulders come back a little bit more and the hips work up to the hammer a little bit more, especially as the hammer goes through zero through here, that'd be a lot nicer. You'd catch with a better position, with your hips more forward towards the hammer. And then same thing in the second turn, you want to lean backwards with the shoulders, lean back, work the hips up. Whereas, like I said, you can see you hit a certain point where the ball comes through zero. And you're not getting pulled forwards, but you're not really like hitting that strong pendulum backwards. And I think that's what makes the difference between a, you know, 50, 60, 70 meter hammer thrower is that when you see an 80, 70 or 80 meter hammer thrower, they get a really strong, strong pendulum backwards through zero. Sitting back, leaning back, whatever you want to call it. I like thinking leaning back because I like the shoulders to come back a little bit and the hips go up. Um, and then you see your hips turning with the ball pretty well but then same thing left shoulders up again think about left shoulder down a little bit more like i said if you think about spiraling the hands i know you can't see your hands right here but if they were just turn a little bit more to the left i think that might set the direction a little bit better give you something to work with and then same thing here on the catch you can see level shoulders but then hip angle is not quite matched up and then you can see your hands start to come in towards the body a little bit and your hips don't quite work up into the throw like they need to still. Like I said, you're, you're not getting pulled forward, but it's not quite optimal in the sense of not hitting that strong pendulum. And you're going to see this left shoulder go the steepest it's been. All throw, left shoulder up, right shoulder down. Hips level, looks like. And then same thing, Paul's going to kind of shoot up what would be to 180, maybe your left sector line because the left shoulder pulls up. And then... Catch and now you're more forwards than you were before on the previous catches. You see you're a little bit in front of what would be this right leg instead of over this right leg. And then you're just trying to fight back as much as you can to come through on the finish. And your hips really never quite get up into the throw. They, uh, now you see. So you see this. You see your shoulders start to come back here and your head go back. Your shoulders go back and your hips work up into the ball. That's what needs to happen every single turn. All right, maybe not this dramatic, perhaps, but you need those shoulders to come back and those hips to work up. And this would be easier to see a little bit from a back view. So um, that being said, this was an interesting video to look at. Uh, I love a good side view video. You get a much different interpretation of the throw. So, yeah, dude, uh, I would scrub through this again, but with this slow frame rate, it's going to take a while. Um, but as I said, it's pretty much just. Uh, yeah, turn that left shoulder down, spiraling the hands a little bit, and then uh, I'll just let it run. And then uh, getting those hips up and shoulders back into the throw, especially right there. Patience is good, but hips up into the throw, hips up forward, hips towards hands, hips towards the hammer, hips chasing the ball around the left and forward, whatever you want, hit the high point, whatever you want to think about. Any of those cues will help, I think. Just need to feel the hips going towards the hammer, so that way you can work the ball a little bit, throw the hammer with the hips. So, cool. All right, hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Paul, also fun fact. I know your last name is Souza. 
played the sousaphone in high school. All right, fun fact for the day. All right, happy Monday. Have a great day. Have a great week, everybody. All right, Paul, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help. If anybody else out there would like some coaching of any kind, go check out www.gripandrip.co and sign up now. That's right, now. It's April 4th. All right. Time is running out before your conference meet, before your national meets, before your other summer championship meets, whatever you might have going on. Now is the time to sign up to make the technical changes that you want to make to throw farther. So, all right. Heed my advice, please. Don't be that procrastinator who does it last minute and then you're trying to make changes the week of a big meet. That's not the way to do it. So, all right. That's it. Thank you for watching. Until next time, Sean Don signing off.